Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. We've just had an incredibly powerful rain shower and now the sun has come out and I'm going to do a little bit of a garden tour but I'm going to highlight specific things that are either showing increase in productivity but also the, the joining of aesthetics and productivity because there's some nice kind of textures happening about and this is very much a polyculture style, you know, permaculture influenced kitchen garden. At certain angles you wouldn't actually realise that there's raised beds with sides because it's just turned so jungly. So I'm going to just pick out some of my favourite things and hopefully it's going to inspire you because we can start to think about what we can do next year in our gardens now that things are starting to slow down. So this garden here compared to the secret garden is very much more of a focus of kind of slightly more wild aesthetic and planting the things that might not be the most productive in terms of things to eat but feel productive for your eyes like you can really feast your eyes on it this this is amaranthus cretanus it's one of my favorite amaranths you can eat the leaves so there is there is that edibility and it's a little bit of a gamble for it to be outside in terms of seed production. We might get there, we might not. It might be a case of actually in the next week or two cutting it at the base and drying it. But in the polycrop, we can actually start to save the seeds from this, which is really exciting. But having this kind of colour throughout the majority of, of summer, but then into autumn, it just lifts any corner of the garden and uh, it self seeds as well. So I didn't actually buy any or sow any this year. So this here is the hotbed. I've already harvested, but I thought I'd put it back in. Harvested this beauty of a pumpkin that was growing in here, but I've got various other, other squash growing here in the hotbed. I've managed to fit in around three plants which has been nice and productive and it's time to start harvesting it all. Now, what I've noticed about this hotbed is that this is with the ramiel chip wood, it's starting to break down really nicely and you can see the, the different kind of mycorrhizal fungi, all the hyphae breaking it down. This, when I disassemble the hotbed, I'm actually going to use the majority of this for mulching around perennials because it's going to be absolutely ideal for that. I might also compost some of it, just chuck it into one of the compost bins for annuals, run it through a whole season and then it's going to be fine for use the following growing season here in the garden. Now in terms of structure, nothing quite has the same impact as corn or sweet corn and some of you might remember from last year that I, I came to the garden and the sweet corn had just disappeared overnight because of something that I really don't like. Voles. So, and rats, all of those things. But here, I've actually been harvesting some nice sweet corn. Now, I'd never call it the most perfect sweet corn in the world, but I actually ate my first sweet corn that I'd properly grown outside ever a couple of weeks ago. I slow roasted it, thanks to the help of uh, Sam's advice in the oven. And uh, there's a few more cobs here to harvest. One of my favorite crops to grow in the garden is ochre. This is it's called New Zealand yam, even though it has nothing to do with New Zealand whatsoever. So this, it grows beautifully. It's a small tuber, um, but you usually harvest it after the first frost. So usually October, late October, but more so November, December time. And it is really tasty, especially roasted. And I've got this pak choy that I've been growing in the front here. I've removed a couple of like the lower leaves, but this, like, what, what an absolutely lovely pak choy that I can have tonight for dinner. I'm just going to take off the roots, let those die down. All of these I'm just going to leave on top a bit like a chop and drop. And then behind there is this uh, squash plant and I've just noticed a marrow. <laughs> Quite a lot going on in this bed. Just notice I've got all of these little dwarf beans which are starting to grow through. Some more amaranth. Here this is radish that is setting seed. Um, but the flowers of radish, so beautiful. I think just planting radish here and there and allowing it to flower, it creates such a subtle but nice kind of impact in terms of aesthetic. Some chard, obviously. And then around here, lots more happening. 
quite like how this kale is looking, but you can see like the calendula in the background. It's, it's like an example here. You've just got this little, this little pop of orange that amongst all of this greenery, it really stands out and it really draws the eye. And this is, uh, it's just a couple of plants here of calendula. So that looks nice in terms of the texture. You've got the texture of the kale. And then in here, I've planted one of the most underrated crops ever, and that's fennel. So here's an example, it's starting to grow quite nicely. But that there, that there is easily one of the most beautiful vegetables that anyone can grow. If there's one skill I could definitely improve on, it would be thinning carrots, but I just never get round to it. So I'm just gonna do my first harvest of little carrots here. These are sown, I believe, back in back in July, and I've got I've got some pretty decent, some pretty decent carrots here. A bit of forking, but you know what? A forked carrot still tastes just like a carrot, so literally nothing to worry about. But um, I'm quite pleased with this, and I've got two big rows of this, so um, that's going to be a lot of food for winter time. So maybe it isn't a skill that I need. Perhaps another skill that I could improve on is uh, trying to grow multi-sown leeks. This is probably ah, the best example so far, which, you know, it's small. I certainly prefer my other method because I know it works, but I'm going to continue to try and see what happens. I am a little bit interested to do taste comparisons because you don't get that blanching effect. So you don't get that lovely as much like lovely white bit of stem. Um, but I can see like, even though these leeks are smaller, they're nicely densely packed. So you are gonna get a nice amount of food. You just might not get the massive leeks that like Charles Dowding gets, which I'm very impressed by. Um, but yeah, it's, gardening is just about trying new things. And I really enjoy that. Just a little shout out to Fennel, just looking at the structure. It's, if you leave it over winter, allow it to run to seed or run to flower the following year. These kind of flowers, along with dill, very similar in terms of flower structure. It's a, it's a magnet for different beneficial insects like lace wings and hover flies and parasitic wasps. And that's part of, you know, I'm trying to attract these part of my army for protecting my garden from pests and diseases. And there's been very little pest and disease issues. You know, there's been little fragments around the place, but it, Nothing's, no crop has been destroyed as a result this year. So I'm really happy with that. One of my favorite things as well is that when the little seeds start appearing, they're like, they're almost like, like little like aniseed type sweets. You can just go about and munch on. There's a, a bunch of red admirals around. When I previously walked past, I'd say about eight or nine appeared out of nowhere. And I, earlier when we were filming, I just thought it was the same, butterfly that we're seeing but it's because of this pear tree red admirals love kind of rotting fruit so it's the same with apples and one of the things that I really like is that everyone loves to talk about biodiversity like how many different things are within a square area or a set area but one of my favorite things is the idea of bioabundance so as I'm filming this, butterflies are landing on Sam. So the idea of bioabundance is, it's like how many of those individual things are in that given area. Like you might find five different types of butterflies, but it's one each. Whereas what if you have four different types of butterflies, but there's six or seven of each one. It's just a nice different perspective of looking at how well a garden is benefiting <laughs> nature. On the subject of fruit, I'm here in my dad's apple orchard. Just wanted to highlight this is one of my favorite varieties. It's called Pitmaston pineapple. It's these small little apples, but they have this incredible pineapple aftertaste. My latest newsletter, I was talking about orchards, the, the history of cider, the fact that there used to be grants in the 80s and 90s that would pay you to remove orchards. And nowadays there's grants to pay you to replant those orchards and also of my thoughts surrounding that. So if you're interested in kind of getting something at the start of every Monday, there's a link down below to my newsletter where I go a lot more in depth than I do here on these videos. It's a little bee saying hello, hello, come on, onto my finger. 